friends welcome to this week's tutorial in this week we will be looking at few more applications of direct product so let us see what kind of questions can come in direct product applications what kind of problems you can encounter in direct product applications so let's start tutorial 8 so let's try to solve at least two questions uh, so let's say uh, in later part of this course we'll be looking at introduction to spectroscopy so this application is in spectroscopy as we have also learned in the regular class so let's say somebody wants to record vibrational spectra don't worry about what this spectroscopy is and what is the use of this spectroscopy we'll Come back to it later but let's say if we are interested in recording vibrational spectra of uh, staggered ethane and maybe another molecule is any other molecule with square pyramidal geometry So now we want to know whether the vibrational spectra will come in these molecules or not. And so to know this, the kind of integration that we need to solve is of this form. And do not worry about how this integration comes in, but let's directly look at the application part. So this is the kind of integral that we need to solve. If this integration does not go to zero, we will see vibrational spectra. If this integration goes to zero, no vibrational spectra, right? So this together is called as selection rule. All right. So now let's say the question is given that psi v zero belongs to totally symmetric representation, and f belongs to x, y, z, x, y, y, z z square y square x square zx or any combination of these or sets thereof okay so these two things are given so psi zero is totally symmetric representation f belongs to any of these functions that means the basis set of this function is known now we know that this is totally symmetric representation now the question is asking that what would be psi v1 so that i does not go to zero so now you try to remember under what conditions the i does not go to zero what are those conditions so the direct product of all these three direct product of let's say f a f b f c must contain totally symmetric representation for i is not equal to zero remember that we have studied this right all right so now we have to find out what will be your psi v prime for these two are given to you under these two different point groups okay so the first point group is staggered ethane so staggered ethane we must know what is the point group of that so staggered ethane belong to d3d point group again we have discussed this so i'm not going to discuss this again so now let's try to find out what is the character table of D3D. Okay, 
we'll see what we have to read out of the character table. So I'll just write down the character table of T3D. Let me take a look at. The so what we have here is E two C three three C two I two S six three sigma Ds right and we have A one G A two G E G A one U A to U and E U. Now we have totally symmetric representation, so all ones A to G will be one one minus one 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 minus one. E G will be two minus one zero two minus one zero. And we have now one 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 minus one minus one minus one 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 minus one minus one minus one one two minus one zero minus two one zero. Now if you look at the these two areas here. So you have the basis sets written here. So my basis set here is RZ, RX, RY. Then I have Z over here, XY. Then I have X square plus Y square as well as Z square. Then I have joint representation for x square minus y square comma x y as well as x z y z right so these are my basis sets now i know that my psi v0 is so i is equal to psi v0 f psi v1 d tau now psi v0 is a1g it is given that it is totally symmetric representation f now can belong to any of this combinations with x y z x square y square z square so it can be a1g it can be eg it can be A to U. Now our job is to determine psi V1. Now it is very simple. So psi V1, whenever F is A1G, it has to be A1G. Whenever F is EG, it has to be EG. Similarly, A to U. And so why is that because now if i take a direct product of these three this will be a totally symmetric representation if i take a direct product of eg into eg this will contain a1g if i take a direct product of a2u into a2u this will be a1g similarly eu into eu would also give you a totally symmetric representation remember this thing comes from that direct product of two same irreducible representation will always contain a totally symmetric representation and we want totally symmetric representation at least one of the components has to be totally symmetric representation so the only combinations where i will contain totally symmetric representation will not go to zero others will all go to zero so combinations of psi v1 as a1g eg a2u and eu will only give a1g and that's how these will be your correct answers okay so psi v can belong to any of this and only then it will give you non-zero i and hence the vibrational spectra of uh, staggered ethane will be visible so that is one now let's see the same case for 
स्क्वायर पिरामिडल मॉलिक्यूल सो स्क्वायर पिरामिडल इज सी फोर वी पॉइंट ग्रुप सो अगेन फॉर सी फोर वी पॉइंट ग्रुप वी नीड टू फर्स्ट राइट डाउन द कैरेक्टर टेबल एंड देन लुक एट द बेसिस सेट्स सो आई सपोज दिस शुड बी इजी बट लेट्स जस्ट डू इट फॉर कंप्लीटनेस E two C four C two two sigma V two sigma D and this side I have A one A two B one B two E and here I have all ones totally symmetric and here I have one one one. Minus one, minus one, now the most important part is to look at the basis set areas, so this will be z r z and here it is x y r x r y. x square plus y square z square x square minus y square x y x z y z. Now here my integral is again of the same form psi v zero f psi v one d tau. Now I know that psi v zero is a one totally symmetric representation. Now what are my f's? What are the possibilities for f's? So f can take value as a one because of this. Then b one. Then b two. And so that means my psi v one will also be of these forms. That means the basis for psi v one can be a one, b one, b two, and depending on what is the actual function, accordingly the psi v one will have different basis sets, right? So these will have non-zero i because this direct product will contain totally symmetric representation, right? So this should be very very clear. so now let us look at one more example one more question one more application in direct product so the question reads like this so in connection with certain form of spectroscopy again it's a spectroscopy related problem so in connection with certain form of spectroscopy Which is a circular diagram. If you have not learned about this, you will learn it later. And I mean, not in this course though. Magnetic circular diagram. so it is necessary to know what electronic transitions are magnet dipole allowed what electronic transitions are magnetic dipole allowed so we have already learned which transitions are electric dipole allowed so this one is about magnetic dipole allowed right so in this case the transition dipole moment will be of different nature now the operators for this have the symmetric properties this is another way of saying that the basis of this 
operator. Symmetry properties of Rx, Ry, Rz. Okay. So now the question part is for a molecule with tetrahedral symmetry, TD symmetry, TD point group, determine which pairs of states could be connected by a magnetic dipole allowed transition so now they are asking that if the operator for this have the symmetry properties as rx ry rz now for a molecule with td symmetry let's say methane determine which pair of states could be connected by a magnetic dipole allowed so when they are asking which pair of states that means they are asking that what will be the symmetry of those states which can be connected by a magnetic dipole allowed transition so the first thing first is to set up integral for this so integral will be the same so you want to see under what conditions the integral will not go to zero so psi zero mu psi one d tau now in this case we don't know what is psi zero we don't know what is psi one because we want to calculate the pair of states these are the pair of states remember that these are the functions which describe the states right so psi zero and psi one So we don't know what is psi zero and what is psi one, or what is the symmetry of psi zero and symmetry of psi one. So we want to calculate that. And given is that mu has symmetry as R x, R y, R z. Okay. Now we want to choose psi zero and psi one so that the overall direct product of this does not go to zero, because it has to be connected by a dipole. Magnetic dipole allowed transition. So that means I should not go to zero, right? Now let us look at the character table. Maybe let's go to next page. So let's look at the character table of TD symmetry. So tetrahedral point group. So you have E eight C three. Three twos, six S four, six sigma Ds, and you have A one, A two, E T one, T two. So one once, then A two will be three ones and two minus ones. We have two minus one two zero zero three three zero zero minus one minus one. Now is the interesting part which you want to focus on. Rx, Ry, Rz, and this is my x, y, z, x square plus y square. Although it is not required to see this one now. E is two z square minus x square minus y square. Okay, so now the question is saying that mu has the symmetry of P one. Mu has the symmetry of R X R Y R Z, right? Now psi zero and psi one, we don't know. Now we have to take a direct product of psi zero, mu, and psi one so that the overall thing contains totally symmetric representation, right? So now what are the combinations which are possible? So you have psi zero, 
d1 psi1 right this is my integration now we know mu so i have put t1 over here now what are the combinations for which psi 0 and psi 1 can be put over here so that the overall direct product triple product of this will not go to 0 that means it should contain totally symmetric representation so i can choose this as a1 t1 t1 that is my first possibility because now i know that if this is a1 it will not matter the direct product of this will not change upon multiplication with a1 because a1 is all ones so t1 into t1 must contain a1 right so overall it will contain a1 so this will not go to zero then what else now the other possibility is t1 is constant t1 i cannot change now the other possibility is if i create another t1 by multiplication of these two right how can i create another t1 by multiplication of so it has to be a one dimensional and another three dimensional representation so that means it has to be a t2 now if i combine t2 into a2 what do i get so 1 into 3 will give me 3 1 into 0 will give me 0 1 into minus 1 will give me minus 1 minus 1 into minus 1 will give me plus 1 minus 1 into 1 will give me minus 1 so that means if i multiply a2 if i take a direct product of a2 into t2 i will get t1 right so that means again i will have a situation where direct product t1 will come so this combination will also not go to zero so that means there are two possibilities which will not go to zero at least by just looking at it right rest of the possibilities i would ask you to do a home assignment you've got the concept right if there are any more combinations that makes i not equal to zero combinations of psi zero and psi one So these are the two possible combinations that I have just told you by just using the type product rules. But you can take different combinations. You can place different IR irreducible representations here and see the triple direct product, whether it contains totally symmetric representation or not, and accordingly tell what will be the answer. So, so the idea is once you know how to deal with direct product you can solve a large number of spectroscopy based problems right so that is all for today so let's look at symmetry adapted linear combinations more problems into that next week all right thank you